Hey fam, how y'all doing today? Welcome back to History Highlights with Lane. Fam, let me know where you're from. If you're from the United States or outside of the United States. In this video, we will highlight the amazing and tragic story of Allensworth, the only California town founded, financed, and governed by Black people. Almost 70 miles south of Fresno, California, tucked away in the small county of Tulare, is a tiny state park. Although it may not look like much, it was once a true testament to Black American resilience. How do you get a whole race of people to uplift themselves after years of persecution? This was the very question Colonel Allen Allensworth asked himself before he embarked on one of the most important journeys in African American history to build the first Black self-sufficient town in California. Sadly, that journey would never get to live up to its full potential. Like so many other symbols of Black excellence in the 1900s, Allensworth's dreams would be poisoned by racism's venomous sting. Colonel Allensworth was an American hero in every sense of the word, and his story doesn't get told nearly enough. But this is Black folklore, where we dive into America's past to tell lesser-known Black stories that touch the soul. And yes, many of our stories end in tragedy, but that does not make them any less inspiring. There is value in understanding what came before you. Here is the amazing and tragic story of Allensworth, the only California town to be founded, financed, and governed by Black people. In 1842, Allen Allensworth was born a slave in Louisville, Kentucky, 20 years before the start of the Civil War. The young boy would spend his entire childhood the property of a white slave owner. Slaves in Kentucky were forbidden from education in fear of rebellion or uprising. In secret, Allensworth would master the English language, learning to read and write, and cultivate a love of learning. But the only way he would truly be able to express this newfound love was to escape his bondage. The first time Allen Allensworth tried to escape slavery, he failed miserably. Although there is no record of his escape, there are a few breadcrumbs from history we can follow to paint a picture. In 1806, the Louisville Police Department began to take shape in the form of five watchmen appointed by the town's trustees. In the South, police forces were created solely to preserve the system of slavery. It isn't out of the question to believe that Allensworth was caught by the police and returned to his slave owner, who probably greeted him with a few lashings from the whip. But it wouldn't deter Allensworth. The start of the Civil War in 1861 would give him the opportunity he needed to run and never look back. He escaped slavery in 1862, seeking refuge behind Union lines. For the next several months, Allensworth would work as a civilian nurse for the 44th Illinois Volunteer Infantry until 1863 when he became a seaman in the Union Navy serving on gunboats. When he left the Navy in 1865 with the rank of first class petty officer, Allensworth leaned into the word of God and enrolled at Roger Williams University to study theology. While learning how to spread the gospel, he also met and married the love of his life, Josephine Lavelle. After becoming an ordained minister, Allensworth jumped right into the pulpit. He began giving several sermons around his hometown of Louisville and became an instant success. The community began to look up to him and it propelled him into politics. In 1880 and 1884, Allensworth would represent Kentucky as one of their delegates to the Republic National Convention. Allensworth's life had changed so much since his time in the Navy, but his heart was still with the soldiers. In 1882, he was asked to help recruit black chaplains for the all-black military units. Instead of recruiting black pastors, Allensworth took the position himself. He believed as a chaplain, he could make the lives of the average black soldier much better. For 20 years, Allensworth taught black soldiers about spiritual health and educational well-being. He was only the second African-American after Henry Plummer named to serve as a U.S. Army chaplain. In 1906, he retired from the Army as the highest-ranked black man in the United States Armed Forces. Retirement didn't slow Allensworth down one bit. After his second stint in the Army, the former slave-turned-colonel 
traveled the U.S. lecturing Blacks on the importance of self-help programs like Booker T. Washington. Allensworth believed Blacks in America needed to become more self-sufficient. But if Blacks were going to stand on their own in America, they needed a safe place to do so. Allensworth wanted to provide that. Following his own advice, he moved to Los Angeles with his family in search of California. Allensworth believed he could build a town dedicated to the prosperity of Black Americans. There weren't many places Black people could live that allowed them to escape the clutches of Jim Crow, even in the North. But California was a new land with hopes and opportunity. All Allensworth needed now was a team. Insert William Payne, a professor at West Virginia Colored Institute, Dr. William H. Peck, a Los Angeles minister, and J.W. Palmer, a Nevada miner. The men searched far and wide for the right plot of land until Allensworth decided on an area in the southwest Tulare County. The land seemed to have an abundance of water and rich soil. On August 3rd, 1908, the all-black town of Salido was born. Later that year, the townspeople would change the name to Allensworth in honor of its most important founder. The town of Allensworth was a true gem and was far ahead of its time. It not only had a depot connection to the Santa Fe Railroad, but also an official town government called the Allensworth Progressive Association. The town held elections as well as regularly scheduled town meetings. Allensworth was also a voting precinct and had its own school district with a local school built with money raised by the community. The school included students from elementary to high school. Since Allensworth prided itself on the importance of education, the town's extracurricular activities were centered around the advancement of the black mind. The town had a women's improvement league and boasted a debating society, a theater club, and a glee club. The town thrived off of its agriculture. Allensworth economy was built around the farmers who lived in the surrounding areas. Allensworth had several businesses, including a bakery, a drugstore, a barber shop, a machine shop, as well as a hotel. Unfortunately, the rest of this history is more of a Greek tragedy than it is a fairy tale. In 1914, Alan Allensworth was killed after he was hit by a motorcycle during a trip to Los Angeles. The town was devastated but continued to prosper. By the 1920s, there were more than 300 residents that lived in Allensworth. It attracted black soldiers, black educators, and black thinkers from all over the country. Its biggest downfall being a black, self-sufficient town in a white, racist country. For Allensworth to continue to blossom, it needed support from the surrounding white establishments, but that was far from the case. The Pacific Farming Company controlled most of the land sales in the state. They frequently sold plots of land to blacks at inflated prices and even refused land sales to blacks after Allensworth began to boom. The Pacific Water Company lied to Allensworth elected officials promising the town the addition of water wells due to the lack of sustainable water sources. Instead of adding water to the water wells in Allensworth, they installed the wells in the neighboring white town, leaving Allensworth's unusable. Townspeople pleaded with the company to keep their promises and add the necessary wills, but the Pacific Water Company ignored their pleas. The long legal battle would end in a loss for the townspeople. Agriculture was so important to the way of life in Allensworth. Once the water went, so did the residents. The Santa Fe Railroad would also follow suit in helping to quickly destroy the popular black town of Allensworth. They suspended the connecting rail line and diverted it into a neighboring all-white town. With no water to form and no transportation to grow, Allensworth ultimately became a ghost town. Gone forever, but certainly not forgotten. Today, in the place that once represented black resilience sits the Colonel Allensworth State Historic Park. The park works to continue the legacy of Allensworth and the ideals that Allen lived by. The organization Friends of Allensworth also allows you to help promote the town's legacy. It was created to raise awareness of the town of Allensworth, as well as to grow support for the park. How do you get a whole race of people to uplift themselves after years of persecution? You give them direction and show them anything can be achieved with determination and confidence in yourself. That was Colonel Allensworth's true legacy. Progress in human affairs is more often a pull than a push. Surging forward of the exceptional man 
and the lifting of his duller brethren slowly and painfully to his vantage ground. W.E.B. Du Bois. So there you have it. A little bit of history on Allensworth, California, the town that was founded, financed, and governed by black people. Be well, stay safe, and stay in peace, not pieces. Hit that bell so you will know every time I upload a video. Word of the year, forward, forward, forward. Love y'all fam. See you soon.